What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and thank you for engaging with our videos. We really appreciate all the feedback. Daniel here just finished upgrading to the Go Fast Camper recently and today we're gonna be doing a complete video walk around his rig as well as finding out if this Go Fast Camper can really go fast. Woof. Sorry, Woof. <laughs> that was, I'm sorry. That was... Hi, my name is Daniel, I'm 31 years old. I own a TRD Pro Tacoma. So I think the, the look evolved. I think, uh, you know, before I had the truck, I had an idea kind of of what I was gonna do, which was more like, we'll call it like expedition style. Like I had the camper shell, it's gonna be a little more beefy. Um, but as I started to do it more and enjoy it more, it was more of a, just make the truck as capable as possible. And uh, also as comfortable as possible when camping. So, so we got like the fiberglass and the GFC and stuff. Before I actually bought the truck, um, I was going and doing camping a good amount, and I had a Prius actually. Oh, you had a, you had a Prius. I had a Prius, and uh, I had cracked the front bumper on a fire road, and I started looking at some different SUVs, and uh, I ended up finding like the Overland hobby, and seeing it on Instagram, and so I started going down looking at different Overland vehicles, um, and I thought I was gonna get a Forerunner actually, but I ended up getting the Tacoma. Saw it on the lot, really liked it, and uh, from there it was gonna I was gonna build an expedition type build. So I got the camper shell and have the rooftop tent up there and uh, just keep it fairly stock, which is why I bought the Pro and didn't get like an SR5 or something and start modding it. So it got super out of hand and now I'm here with this. So <laughs> for suspension, I went with a three and a half inch Total Chaos race kit. I went with the race kit because it's got higher clearance than any other kit that's out there right now. And uh, I went with King Shocks. I've got a 700 pound spring on there and a secondary triple bypass as well. I went with the triple bypass on there uh, for the secondary because of the extra weight that I have and I'm, I'm pretty top heavy and I just wanted that stability without running a sway bar. And that's, that's actually worked out really well. Um, in the back, I've got a 12 inch King Shock uh, with triple bypass as well for the adjustability. And uh, I'm using the Archive Garage relocation kit as well as their hangers and shackles. And then I'm running a Deaver Expedition Stage 2 leaf pack. So for wheels, I'm running VTX uh, Rogue. I think they're called Stealth. Uh, it's the, the beadlocks black as well. It's a 17 inch. Uh, the back spacing I believe is negative 12. Um, and then for the tire, it's a BF Goodrich KM3 35, 12 and a half, 17. And I went through a few different iterations of, of wheels and tires. Um, when I started the build, I was 285, 75, 16 tire, KO2. And that worked for a while, but I started rubbing as I got kind of more into it. Um, even if you do a cab mount shop, you're going to rub with upgrading your tire size. Suspension doesn't cure it. Um, and then from there, when I ended up putting 35s on, basically a company asked me to do a photo shoot with my truck. And so we used 35s for the photo shoot and I saw it and I was like, I really want to have that now. And I knew that's what was going to happen because I like, I played with it in my mind. And so I was thinking, um, like if I do it, actually I was already re-geared at the time too. I re-geared with the intention of going 35s. I did a, a photo shoot, they put the 35s on, it looked really good, and then uh, Taco Dust Jason had let me borrow his uh, his VTX bronze wheels with his tires on after the photo shoot because I needed to take those off because they were awful. Um, so we put those wheels on, I really liked the stance, the way it looked, and I ended up buying the same wheels but in a 16, and then doing 315 75 16 inch tires. Um, I think I said earlier before I went to 70, but no, so those are 35, 12 and a half. I had put 315, 75, 16 on there. And those were super wide. So if you go back and you like look at some pictures of my truck and the stance, those tires were really, really wide and it looked, it looked great. But the thing with a 16 inch wheel on a Tacoma is that you can't upgrade your brakes. And so with the weight that I've added to the truck, I knew that I needed to upgrade the brakes. And so that's why I went to a 17 inch wheel. If you're someone who doesn't have a bunch of weight, I would stick with a 16 inch wheel because you can get more tire which makes the ride a lot better. So I'm running McNeil fiberglass, it's the three inch kit. Um, and I took it to, uh, so the guy who did a lot of the fiber work on my truck, he has a buddy that does paint work. And uh, I took it to him to have him do all the paint prep, painted it, installed it for me. And he did a really great job. Um, I beat the crap out of it and it's, it's holding up. Uh, I do like the look of the glass, but it's fiberglass, so there's some imperfections and whatnot. So the install took a few days. Uh, he spent a lot of time making the glass try to look as, I guess, as, um, as smooth as possible. Um, and it, he did a great job. It's just, it's, it does take a lot of work. Dude, honestly, like playing with glass is, it's a headache. You have to be. So I've, I've had a lot of conversations about that. Um, someone who, so the reason actually that like, I got into the whole long travel thing, I had played with the idea 
Um, but I didn't want to commit to like the financial piece of it. And I ended up getting my original Icon suspension that I had on there as a stage nine kit for really, really cheap. And uh, I knew that I could sell that and make a little bit of money off of it. And then I actually slid on ice uh, last winter and I think I crashed into someone else basically. And so my rear bedside needed to be replaced and then the bumper needed to be replaced as well. So I just, I, when that happened, I was like, okay, I've got the cash from the insurance money rather than having them just paint some, you know, factory bumper bedsides. I'll go ahead and I'll do the fiberglass thing, do the suspension thing. Um, and truthfully, that's kind of the way I was able to afford everything. It was the timing was right. And when I buy stuff, um, you mentioned before research, I'll do a bunch of research, but I'll also try to find deals on everything. For armor, I'm running a C4 hybrid extra wide bumper uh, so that it matches the fiberglass. And then skid plates, I'm running barrier metal fabrication, the Trilogy skid plate. Uh, it's a quarter inch skid plate and it's probably more skid plate than I'll ever need or use. I don't wheel that hard and beat the crap out of my truck that hard, but the idea was that I never have to replace them. And then also, again, being that I'm pretty top heavy with a camper on there, I wanted to lower my center of gravity, so I went with the heaviest skids I could find. Um, and so that was a big part of the decision for getting those. Um, and then also my truck's pretty heavy, so I knew aluminum I'd probably break in one trip of using them. Um, and then I've got a Pelfrey gasket on there, so I'm pretty covered up underneath. Uh, sliders, today I've got some DeMello Dominator sliders. I've had them, so I think one of the first things I did to the truck was put those on there. Um, and they've worked great. Uh, I'm gonna end up moving and changing to uh, my buddy that does the other stuff, um, the guy did the suspension work in my rear bumper. Uh, his name is Joe from Outgear Solutions. He's in Santa Ana, really good dude. Um, so he's making some sliders that are a little cleaner. Um, and then also he added like a reinforcement at the end of them where a lot of sliders are weak. Um, if you stand on the back of a slider, you can kind of see it dip a little bit. And so he's got an extra brace there that keeps from doing that. And then for the rear bumper, it's a, a bumper that he made me. Um, tube style, kind of wanted to go for like that hybrid look. I don't see anyone really doing a hybrid rear bumper. Really happy with the way it came out. It's crazy, crazy high clearance. It's really lightweight. I had a, a brute force bumper on the back before, which is absolutely bulletproof with the swing arm, with the table, which is super convenient, put your tire on there. But honestly, with these trucks, it's, it's too much weight. Um, I think if you're cruising around and doing like the expedition thing, or you're just kind of overlanding, it's, it's fine. Um, braking would be my concern with that much weight, just at any point. But if you're gonna go and rip through the desert, it's just, it's way too much weight. You can't control it. For the, for the diff skid, I'm running a barrier metal fabrication. So for lighting, I'm running Baja designs all the way around. The center light bar is a Baja S8 30 inch. It's an amber, it's a combo lens. The first pod is a Squadron Sport. That's a spot. Uh, they actually don't make an amber spot, so I run the white spot, and then I usually have an amber lens over that. The next one over is the same light, which is with a combo lens on it. And then the other one next to that is an S2, which is a wide cornering. And the way I have them set up basically gives me, um, I don't have ditch lights, and it actually gives me almost full ditch light coverage because those wide cornering ones are, are angled and they're, they shine super wide. So it works out really well. I really like using those, uh, rolling into camp and whatnot and seeing what's on the side of the road. Nice, um, and then on the back of the GFC, there's a Baja Designs RTL, which is pretty cool. It does uh, turn signals and they have a few different of them, but it does turn signals. It's got like a white backup light. It's got an amber chase light. Um, and then it's got the brake light built into it. So super clean. And then for the rock lights, I'm running Yoda Mafia's six light kit, which is really cool. Um, you can tap it into, if you want, you can do it in your Switch Pros, but basically by design, he's done it so that it's just factory. You use a factory switch, you use the one that's over the bed. Clearly I don't use it because I've got the GFC there. So I throw it on there. Um, and then when you open your door, it comes on. When you unlock your car, it comes on. And he uses good quality lights. They're the KC um, Cyclones that they, they make. And those are really cool, super low profile. And it wires up really nice, I really like it. Have you done anything inside the engine bay at all? So for the engine bay, all I've done is get it muddy and dirty. <laughs> I, ha I really haven't done anything under there. I've upgraded the battery. I'm running an XS Power, which is a, a car audio battery that's got a lot of juice. How do you um, like it? It's great. I, I've not had a single issue with it. It's massive for the truck, weighs a ton, um, but it's in a Pelfrey battery cage, which has been solid. Um, I got a power trays in there that I'm running the Switch Pros on, but that's really it under the hood. Um, one of the things with the fiberglass actually is you, it's, it's difficult to put some of the, the protection off that keeps your engine bay clean. And so it's, it's an absolute mess in there. For air on the truck, I'm running currently, I just got a power tank, which is CO2, which is really, really cool. If you go to their website, they've got like this graph that shows you based on your tire size and which tank you get, 
how many fill-ups you will have for four tires. So I just got a 10 pound tank trying to keep it light. I think it was about 40 tire fills, um, which is per tire. So it's about 10 fill-ups from airing down. And I love it because it's so freaking fast. It's crazy. Um, and then the tools that all come with it to air up are just, they're just really nice. It's a little bit more expensive, but I think it's, it's worth it if you go out and do it a lot. Um, and then the CO2 thing, my idea was, you know, one, if I ever DB'd, CO2 makes it way easier to get your tire back on. And then two is sometimes it's windy. Like I feel like every time I'm airing up, it's cold and windy or snowy. And so having like the quick fill up, get out of there in literally probably two minutes um, to be able to fill up all tires. Before that, I had a, a Smitty built. It was their bigger one. And that worked great. I used it for two years. I used it a lot. No issues whatsoever. It gets hot, but that thing is pretty solid as well. For airing down, I use a Morflate which is really cool. It does all four tires at once. It's got a digital tire pressure gauge. And it's cool because again, like you're, you can go, you can have a conversation with someone while you're airing down and you're done in a minute. For lighting controls, I do a Switch Pros, which is super cool. Um, I love it. Honestly, it makes wiring just way easier. You can dim things and uh, it works really well in, in the Tacoma specifically because there's like a perfect little spot for it. For external power and power, like power in my fridge, I've got a fridge in there as well, uh, Dometic, DZ65, I think it is. I use a, a Jackery. It's like a, a basically like a Goal Zero, just another company that makes it. And that thing works pretty well. Uh, I think it's their 500 series. And uh, the main thing that I do with it is I wire it up to my cigarette lighter, the, the, the power bank itself. And then I plug the fridge into the power bank. And so as the, the battery's charging, the fridge is being ran off of it. So when I get to camp at night, it's completely full. I pull, turn the keys off in the truck the 12 volt lighter turns off and then it just runs off battery overnight. So usually in the morning, if it's not cooking at night in the middle of the summer, I'll be at like 85%. So I can run it for a few days like that. And then usually when I'm cruising around during the day, it recharges itself. So for recovery gear, I've got a Smitty built winch up there. It's a synthetic line. Uh, it's their 10,000 pound winch. And I've only used it a couple times to help out other people, but it's been great. Um, for, I guess along with the winch, I've got a soft shackle, one of them, I've got a hard shackle, uh, the soft shackle's a KB Voodoo, and then the hard shackle's just a generic one that I picked up from a, a hardware store. Um, and then I use a Deadman off-road recovery kit, which that thing is awesome because it's a tree saver. Uh, you can use it to self-recover in the sand, you bury it. And then I have a set of Max Tracks, uh, which again, as much as they make, made fun of, they work really well. For gears, I'm running the Nitro Gear 529s. I've had them on for about a year and a half. And I did them when I, I still had 33s and uh, it did help. So stock gearing, as soon as you upgrade tires, I feel like you never see sixth gear, which is the that overdrive gear. You have the fifth and the sixth. Um, and on those long trips that I do, I do a ton of miles. Never seen sixth gear, just was you know sucking up gas. So once I re-geared, I was in sixth gear pretty quickly, even like going like 50 miles per hour with the, the smaller tires. Um, but now, now that I've got the 35s on there um, and with weight, you do notice a good difference when you um, are coming off the line, right? And, and going, especially like actually driving in the city, right? When you're on the highway, the difference that you have is when you're going, you know, with 529s and 35s, 2100 RPMs is about 70 miles per hour. So, and that's that's right in that ideal gas mileage range. So between 1900 and 2100 on the third gen is where you want to be. And uh, that's, again, ideal gas mileage on those long trips, it does add up. Um, but my favorite part about the gears is when I'm on a trail and I'm crawling or going down a hill, putting it in first gear and just letting it crawl is, is the best part by far. Yeah, so for the interior, I've done a, not a whole lot as far as cosmetically, but I'm a big audio guy. And before I got into this, so we mentioned the Prius before, my Prius was a ridiculous audio build and I competed in it and uh, did really well with it. It was actually really cool. Um, I'll probably, I'll send you some pictures so you can show people. It's ridiculous. Um, but in this one, uh, the first thing I did was soundproofing. So there's a ton of soundproofing. It's not just like throwing Dynamat on there. There's the first layers, a, uh, a layer of the Dynamat. It's not Dynamat brand, it's another company. The next layer is closed cell foam. And so Dynamat kills vibration. It doesn't soundproof anything with mass soundproof. So Dynamat has m mass. So it is gonna quiet things a little bit, but then that next layer is foam, foam, it's called decoupling the sound wave, which is breaking it up basically. And so you put this layer of foam down and then the last layer is mass loaded vinyl, which is called, people call it MLB. And that weighs one pound per square foot, super heavy. But once you lay that on top, it really, really soundproof stuff. First mod I did on the truck actually for anything, if you want to call it a mod, was the floor mats I have. So I've got the liners that cover the entire thing. I think mine are WeatherTech. 
So the weather techs I've ran in every car I've owned actually. Again, it's the first thing I do when I get a new car is I get the new floor mats that they give you. I flip them upside down so I'm using the rubber yeah. until I order them from Tacoma Beast and they arrive. Uh, so I, please don't put that in there. That was <laughs> <laughs> way too markety. So for the floor liners, it's I get the ones that cover the entire thing. All that soundproofing honestly has made them not fit as well as they should. So if you look at like the corners, they kind of fold up, but I didn't have a problem with that in any of my other vehicles. So the, yeah, adding all that soundproofing just made the floor stick up a little higher, things hang over. Um, but I love those mats. I think every single person that actually takes their truck anywhere where there's gonna be water, snow, mud, rain, should have those. Um, just protects your investment. And then uh, I'm running the Miso LED lights for dome and map. I run them in red. Um, and then... Oh cool, you have them in red? Yeah. We started selling those recently and I, I, I think I wanna go red. So for the stereo, I've got, um, again, kind of started off a little bit like the suspension, like I got Icon Stage 9, pretty good. Did that basically with the audio, got something that was pretty good and then ended up just pulling some things apart and redoing it. So for subs, there's a, a guy that you can find on Instagram, his name is Mr. Marv, he makes sub boxes. Um, older dude that used to build cabinets, but builds really, really good clean stuff. And tell him what sub you want, he'll build your box perfectly for you. It'll fit in the Tacoma, he's done it for years. Um, so I have his box and then I've got two Image Dynamics 10s back there running off of a Gladen Audio 1200 watt amp. And then for sound processing and amplification of the speakers themselves, it is a Helix P6 DSP MK2, um, which is really cool. It gives me, uh, I think it's 120 watts per channel. Um, and I've got a three-way system in there. The doors have an Audio Frog GS690 mid-bass. And then on the dash, I've got some ScanSpeak Relevator um, 12Ms, I'm sorry, 10Ms. And those are the mid bass, and then I've got a span speak, scan speak R3004 tweeter. Um, and then I've got the Alpine Halo 9 in there as well, which is a really nice screen. I guess a couple things, I get a lot of questions on that actually. People ask me a ton about that screen. Um, a lot of people haven't seen it, but yeah, so Alpine makes this screen, it's called a Halo 9, and it fits in a single DIN slot. And so you end up having a cubby underneath it, and that screen is nine inches and uh, has Apple CarPlay and will make your factory radio and speakers sound a lot better. It's got a lot of tunability in it. Um, but the downside to it is I miss the Tacoma, the factory Toyota GPS that's built into it. Uh, this doesn't have GPS, it runs off of your phone. So if you don't have cell reception, you gotta make sure you download your maps before you go in the area. But uh, one of the coolest things on the factory radio is it's got this GPS uh, breadcrumb trail that people should turn on if you're on a trail and it'll leave little dots of everywhere you went. So if you're on some huge trail system, you wanna make sure you find out which way you came in so you can get back out, it'll show you the little dots. So that's really cool. Factory Raider has that built in. I wish the Alpine had that. Um, and then I'm running an Expedition Essentials TPAM. Uh, it's the newer one that's three pieces, which is really cool. I don't have the wire cover on there yet. It's sitting at home, I gotta install it. But that thing is built crazy, crazy well. And uh, I like it. I like having the USB ports up there to be able to charge stuff so I don't have cables everywhere. It's really nice. Yeah, so the last big thing I did to the truck was uh, was that Go Fast Camper. I ordered it about a year ago, and uh, right before it came, a buddy of mine was selling his, and so I grabbed his, um, and then ended up selling my spot to someone. Um, but I freaking love the thing. It is really, really strong. Um, I was worried about it with the fiberglass thing, right? That's like the complication now of things you do with fiberglass and what you have to worry about on your truck. Um, so, Taco Dust Jason, um, he left the factory bedside on and trimmed underneath. So just the top of it is the factory bedside and then the fiberglass fender sit on top of that. So you still have the, the durability of the factory bedside. So, um, did that. I'm stoked on it. It's really easy to set up. I like crazy, crazy easy. I'd probably show you guys. Um, but I love it. It's really comfortable. Um, did another trip with my girlfriend last weekend and, uh, it was cool. It's like 17 degrees outside. So we got in the camper and played cards and you have room in there. If you could describe the whole process of setting it up, how fast it is from start to finish, I mean. Yeah, so setting up the, the GFC is crazy. Uh, basically, pull the tailgate down, flip up the uh, the back panel, climb up there, it's two latches, and then the shocks just automatically let it go up. It's like 15 seconds through the entire process. And then closing it up is, you know, it's probably about a minute, um, sometimes less, sometimes a little bit more, just depending on kind of like where the fabric falls but you get better at it as you use it. And uh, it's still way better than like, again, the main thing that made me push me to get the GFC was I cracked my snug top on a trail. Um, I was on Black Bear and 
uh, it slid forward and that thing was bolted down tight and it broke my back window. So I ended up getting that repaired and I ended up selling that knowing that it just wasn't going to last me with what I was trying to do. So then the go fast camper was kind of a, a no brainer in terms of durability. And uh, the benefit of it is if you have like that traditional rooftop tent that just folds over, if you've ever camped in either rain or snow and it's like five degrees in the morning you wake up, you're freezing and you have to wrap everything up and it's all covered in snow, your hands are freaking miserable. And so like that was the biggest selling point. Like after I went to Montana and had to deal with that every morning, no brainer getting that and uh, I love it. Yeah, so last night I bolted on uh, some new bump stops in the rear. That was like the last piece of suspension that I think I'm gonna do on the truck. Um, front bump stops, I've still got the factory ones there. I might just delete them all together. That secondary is supposed to act as a bump. Um, but, you know, suspension wise, that was kind of like the huge big thing that I did. The fiberglass to me was less than doing the whole suspension upgrade, especially financially. So now it's tune the truck. Like I've got the GFC, I was waiting to do that. I've had the long travel on for, I don't know, six, seven, eight months now. And uh, I didn't want to tune it until I had kind of the final setup because I didn't want to spend the money twice. So GFC's on there, rear bump stops are on there. Now it's time to, to get it tuned and just have fun. That's kind of where I'm at with the build. I'm tired of spending money, I'm tired of not being able to take my truck out sometimes because it's being worked on. And uh, yeah, where it's at right now, I love it. I'm stoked on it. Dude, so do you actually use this thing? Do I actually use my truck? I don't know if that's a question right now to fuck with me on camera or what, but yeah, I use my truck a lot. All right guys, that about wraps it up for this build walk around. That was Daniel's truck. If you guys like this video, make sure to hit the like button. If you guys haven't already subscribed, make sure to do so. I will see you guys in the next video.